What's up everyone, Darkblade here bringing you another Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guide. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Batarian Slasher Adept. This guy is quite underrated, he is really powerful and he is quite durable. He has a good health pool and has a good set of biotic abilities. Now as with all my characters I spec them for the harder difficulties in the game. With the Batarian Slasher I skip out Lash completely. I do this in favour of maxing out fitness. This is because it makes the Batarian Slasher that much more durable. The actual benefits you can get from Lash are maybe not as good when you compare it to the durability. I max out Warp as always, putting points into Pierce over Recharge Speed. This is because Pierce gives you a nice debuff on opponents. I put points into Expose over Lash and Damage, again because this is a nice debuff. And finally I put points into Detonate over Damage. This is because I will be using Warp as a debuffing move rather than a damage dealing ability. I put maximum points into Cluster Grenades, putting points into Shrapnel over Force and Damage. I put points into Damage Combo over Max Grenades. This is because Damage Combo is incredibly powerful. If you set up an opponent with a Biotic move and then hit them with a Cluster Grenade that has Damage Combo, you will be doing a lot of damage. Finally, I put points into Radius over Damage and Force. Again, this is because I want the Cluster Grenades to be affecting as many people as they possibly can. Now, the main reason why I'm not putting points into Force and Damage abilities in Cluster Grenades is because the damage I will actually be dishing out will be from the Biotic Explosions rather than the abilities themselves. Finally, I maxed out both passive abilities. With Batarian Enforcer, I went for Weapon Damage, and with Fitness, I went for Health and Shields. Now as for weaponry, this is really down to personal preference, although you don't want to overburden the Batarian Slasher with too much weight. I personally went for a nice shotgun, although a decent assault rifle would be just as sufficient. As for the gear slot, I went for increasing my grenade capacity. This means that I'll be able to use more grenades and set off more biotic explosions. Anyway, let's get into the heart of the episode and talk about the Batarian Slasher Adept's moves and abilities. Its first move is Lash. Now, I didn't put any points into Lash, but I'm still going to talk about it nonetheless. Lash is an ability that allows the Batarian Slasher to throw a biotic field towards opponents, latching onto them and then jerking them towards the Batarian. This move isn't the hardest hitting biotic ability, but it does a moderate amount of damage. The biggest bonus about Lash is that it throws unprotected enemies off their feet, so these are enemies without shields, barriers or armour. These enemies who are thrown will completely be taken out of the action as they get flung across the map and potentially even off the map altogether, which gets you the kill for them. If you really did want to put points into Lash then, I would definitely advise putting points into Shield Penetration. This allows you to throw opponents who have barriers and shields. So the only opponents who will not be affected by the actual throw effect of Lash will be opponents who have armour. Unfortunately, to get shield penetration, you have to invest maximum points into Lash, and with the Batarian Slasher Adept, I don't necessarily think it's worth it. Opponents who have been affected by Lash will be set up for a biotic explosion. You can also use Lash to actually detonate biotic explosions. Unfortunately, both the setup and detonation from Lash have to be on opponents who can be affected by Lash. It should also be noted that Lash is good against Cerberus Guardians, as Lash allows you to rip their shields away from them. Overall, Lash is not a bad move. It's a little bit circumstantial, as it only affects certain opponents. It's not a bad move, and if you really don't like warp or cluster grenades, it's an alternative you can consider using. Now, the second move and ability available to the Batarian and slasher adept is warp. This move is available to a lot of the adept characters in the game. It's a nice damage dealing ability that puts a really useful debuff on opponents. Basically the Batarian Slasher will throw a ball of biotic energy towards opponents. When it hits them it rips them apart at the molecular level. It weakens armor so enemies who have armor will take more damage after they've been affected by warp. This can be increased even further if you put points into the pierce talent in the warp tree. Putting points into exposing the warp tree also means that any enemy type will take more damage from weapons and powers. And lastly, it stops enemies from regenerating their health. Warp is also an arcing ability. So if you aim right, you can actually make the warp fly over cover and hit enemies who are hiding behind walls and fences. You should definitely use this to your advantage when you come across enemies who like to hide. Warp is also an ability that can be used to both set up and activate biotic explosions. For those of you who still don't know what a biotic explosion is, it's basically an area of effect damage move around a person who has been affected by a biotic ability. 
Once they are hit with a second and different biotic ability, they create this explosion, damaging anyone around them. With points in detonate in the warp tree and damage combo on the cluster grenades means that the Batarian Slasher Adept will be setting up and setting off some very powerful biotic explosions. Warp can also be used to activate tech combos, so if you're playing with a load of tech characters, you can still contribute to their tech combos, such as fire explosions, tech bursts, and cryo explosions. So all of this makes Warp one of the best and most useful abilities in the game. Now, that brings us on to our third and final ability available to the Batarian Slasher Adept, Cluster Grenades. With Cluster Grenades, the Batarian Slasher will lob a biotic grenade that clusters out into multiple fragment pieces to damage opponents. Unprotected enemies who are hit by cluster grenades will actually fly quite a considerable distance. It's quite amusing to watch. The damage from cluster grenade is per grenade. So once the grenade splits, the damage is actually lessened. Unless actually, of course, if the enemy is hit by all of the fragments. So this means that when using a grenade at close range, you guarantee that all fragments are likely to hit an opponent, thus dealing out maximum damage. Whereas if you use it at long range, there's quite a good chance that the enemy will take lessened damage because some of the fragments could miss. Now one of the best things about cluster grenades is that they are a grenade and they actually don't need a power cooldown timer at all. So you're able to pretty much set off biotic explosions in quick succession, as long as of course enemies have been primed. Now of course you can prime enemies for a biotic explosion with warp, but this will actually only set up one biotic explosion. What you could do is use warp multiple times before actually throwing a grenade. This ensures that you'll set off multiple biotic explosions with the cluster grenades. This also means that the cluster grenade fragments will receive more benefit from bonus combo in the cluster grenade tree because putting points into damage combo ensures that actually only one of the fragments, the fragment used to actually set off the biotic explosion, is double damage. If you set up multiple people for biotic explosions, it means that more than just the first fragment will do double damage. The downside of cluster grenades is that they are grenades and there is a limited supply of them. Now, whereas maybe not as good as the Drill Adept, the combination of warp and cluster grenade still works quite well. It still can be incredibly devastating. As for the passive abilities, now, like I normally say in my videos, these are down to personal preference. With the Batarian Slasher Adept, I went for putting points into weapon damage over power damage. This is because I'm not really using my powers for actually dishing out the damage. I'm using the biotic explosions. So I'd rather put points into weapon damage over power damage on the Batarian Slasher. As for fitness, I put points into increasing my health and shields, simply because I want this guy to be as durable as he possibly can. As for weaponry, like I said at the start of the video, this is down to personal preference with this character, although you don't want to overburden yourself too much. And finally, as for gear slots, you want to try to increase the amount of grenades you can carry. Now, the Batarian Slasher Adept is a Batarian. It's a race I'm not overly fond of, I mean, well, they're quite ugly, but nonetheless, they are quite durable. The Patarians come with an increased health and shield pool when compared to the humans or Asari. They also come with possibly one of the best melee moves in the game. Their heavy melee, which is the Batarian Enforcement Gauntlet, is sort of like a wind-up punch that does incredible amounts of damage, even when you haven't actually modified your character to do increased melee damage. Their light melee is a simple combo, which is still actually quite powerful, and it's actually quite fun to watch the Batarian whirl on someone with a two-handed weapon. Unfortunately, there is a downside, and that is that the Batarians are quite slow. They lack maneuverability and they also lack a dodge mechanic. So there's no way for them to dodge out of the way of incoming rockets or fire as easy as other races. Overall, the Batarian Slasher Adept, in my opinion, is quite underrated because it is a very powerful character when you focus solely on warp and cluster grenades. Combine this with a good weapon and as long as you keep on top of your grenade count and you'll be easily able to do a lot of damage. This character also comes with the durability to survive the difficult modes in the game. He is really worth trying out. Anyway, I've been Dartblade bringing you my guide to the Batarian Slasher Adept in Mass Effect 3's multiplayer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.